Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Wednesday sessions for Track A. And we're kicking it off with the sessions from David and Tom. I'll be introducing them both, and then uh, David would, uh, will be speaking uh, first. So um, just to confirm that uh, you are in the right place, or if not, Maybe it'll be a nice, pleasant surprise. Oh, and by the way, I'm Chrissy Haluk. I'm the moderator for Track A for today. And um, you'll have the pleasures of listening to David Armlin, who's the VP of Solution Architect and, and Customer sec, uh, Success at Chaos Search. And um, in his role, he works closely with new customers to ensure successful deployments, as well as with established customers to help streamline integrating new workloads into the chaos search platform. Dave has extensive experience in big data and customer success from prior roles at HubSpot, Deep Information Sciences, Verizon, and more. Dave loves technology and balances his addiction to coffee who doesn't, with, sorry for the tea drinkers out there, with quality time with his wife, daughter, and son as they attack whatever sport is in season. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science from Northeastern University. Following David will be Tom. I'll introduce Tom so then that way you could dive into the nitty gritty of uh, the start, uh, kickoff sessions for track A is uh, Tom Hips. Litzel, who's the VP of Data Management at DataAvail. Tom is an accomplished IT executive and board member with more than 33 years of success in the retail, info services, FSI, healthcare, transportation, and manufacturing industry. His broad industries of expertise include strategic planning, business development, digital client-centric solutions, project and program management, M&A, Big data science, data management, predictive analysis, business intel, data viz, and agile methodology. Tom's experience enables rapid practical development and execution of the profitable application of big data and leading edge business intelligence. He has led initiatives using service oriented and web architectures for transactional, analytical, and web business enabled solutions using leading vendor solutions and technologies. Tom holds an MBA in Finance Management, Information Systems from Rutgers, Graduate School of Management, and a BS in Chemical Engineering from WPI. Okay, and without further ado, here's Steve. Take it away, Dave. The yeah, oh, sure. Great, thank you. Great, thanks, thanks everyone uh, for being here this morning. I was just looking at the catalog because we, we have a rather audacious uh, title here of learning and unlearning and embracing the future of enterprise data, which is a bit of an upgrade from the original title, which was really more moving data to the cloud. So for if there's any, you know, people read the other title here, it's not that divergent, but just a little more audacious in terms of what we're, we're gonna tackle this morning. So uh, my, um, my bio was one that was snagged from our website that's been around for a while. I, we're all fans of coffee and, and chase our kids around, so that's uh, a little bit uh, funny that the, uh, the one that didn't make it into the uh, catalog. So um, I'm gonna start out by just describing, um, we released um, a survey uh, with Unisphere that surveyed um, a variety of folks on, on their, their um, um, thoughts about data warehouses and data architectures moving ahead. And what we found is that people are investing in data, data warehouses. 82% of the enterprises surveyed were, were investing in data warehouses. But more of these respondents were transitioning to data lakes. So now we have 56% of, of people investing in data lakes. And on top of that, we found that data quality and timelines. Timeliness were the most pressing issues cited by the respondents. And overall, one of the major things that folks were really concerned with was the latency and lag time for organizations of getting data into their data lakes. Additionally, data replication is a large and important thing for people moving to data lakes. Um, data lakes and data warehouses 
um, support of variety of a, a variety of workloads and workloads. So now, looking at operational analytics, folks want to start simple and build upon that. So there's various stakeholders that are involved in the in the development and movement of, into data lakes. So you have your, your CXO, you have DevOps and architects that are involved in moving forward with this. Now, it quickly becomes complicated with the various stakeholders. Now, it takes time to bring things along. You need to set up a BI system. You have to design the architecture. And it takes time to set up the data pipelines. From there, you have to set up schema across the databases and, and services. So moving ahead, all of these teams have to work together. Because of that, the time to deploy these takes a long time. So moving from weeks to days and, and, and being able to kind of bring that together is very difficult. Now, the main thing that people are seeing as data grows is that platforms break under pressure. The complexity of these systems and the data growth involves time, cost, and risk. Now, Chaos Search activates your data lake. We have customers in a variety of verticals, from Armor to Klarna, that are deploying our product. Now, the key component of, of being able to bring data together in a data lake is being able to control complexity. Now, the, the Chaos Data Platform is comprised of our Chaos Fabric, the Chaos Index, and the Chaos Refinery. Our product allows you to control and bring data into a data lake, controlling cost, complexity, and scale. And we're able to expose data with a variety of APIs. Our initial go-to-market is using the Elasticsearch API and provides a built-in Kibana experience. From there, different teams can use the, the Elastic API for security operations or DevOps or SecOps. And also, we're rolling out SQL, and that will provide opportunity to use tools like Looker, Tableau, Power BI, and these types of things to get into the data lake. And we're currently supporting the Amazon Cloud, Google Cloud, and, and we'll be bringing out the Azure Cloud this year. Now, the important thing about the data lake platform that's built for complex architecture is really just being able to bring data into the cloud very easily. And with Chaos Search, it's extremely simple because basically the core technology is built on cloud ob object storage. So our index, the first thing you have to do is really just set up a roll arm to read data from the cloud object storage, and then we'll, we'll index the data in cloud object storage and then write the data back to the bucket. Now, once the data is indexed, we have a refinery that allows you to create a view that will look at the lens of the data that's in the bucket. Now, most products, when you are assembling a data lake, the first thing you have to do is bring the data out of the data lake or bring the data, data out of other systems and into your lake. With Chaos Search, the core differenti differentiator is that we're indexing the data in cloud object storage and writing the index right back into your cloud object storage. So data is never retained in the Chaos Search SaaS platform. It's, it's stored in your cloud object for storage and allows you to use the economy and scale of cloud object storage, resiliency and the security that's embedded there without having to um, bring it out into, into other platforms where you lose control of the, the access to the information. So governance, the ability to set RBAC rules and, and allow you to create different views and lenses with our refinery. So Thomas Hazel, our founder, did the keynote yesterday and he talked a lot about the raw access to data in its raw form. And I think that's essentially what we're seeing today as a main driver for you know, data growth. Uh, you, you have to worry about you know, how schema may drift or changes to the data or just the scale of the data that you won't be able to assemble it all into a lake. So with data lake thinking and the ability to index everything that you can in your, in your cloud object storage gives you gr a great power to, 
to be able to, to get more insights out of that data because you're able to bring all data sources in one location and refine it there. So Chaos Search is essentially a schema on read system. And with that, you're able to create views into that data and transform the data after it's been indexed to provide new, new ways of looking at the data and then do your, your analysis. So um, uh, many, many of you, and back to that audacious slide one where we were thinking about relearning or unlearning things, we're not really throwing away all of the learnings of the last 30 years, but essentially allowing you to bring everything together and reuse those tools and concepts. So because we're a schema on read system, you're able to um, essentially do transformations and things after you've brought the data to, to, to cloud object storage. In many cases, the, um, you know, people assemble data in cloud object storage, and then step one is bringing it out or transforming it and moving to other systems. And, and what we're, we're building and bringing to market is the ability to bring it into the cloud object storage layer and just leave it there and then index it and transform it and, and, and at scales that typically would, would not be possible in other products. So just thinking about some of the, the, the use cases for optional operational log analytics and you know, infrastructure and security use cases, because you're able to bring all of that to data together in cloud object storage, it may be coming from cloud application, uh, web application firewalls or application logs or authentication systems. Operational data from other systems can all be brought into the cloud object storage layer and allow you to do analytics on it right there. So often, you know, you're, with that, you're able to collapse, remove a lot of um, layers. And in many cases, the actual cloud object storage itself acts like a very effective queue. Now, we're not saying that you need to throw away Kafka and all the other things that you may be f streaming data into, but the reality is because cloud object storage is so resilient, you're able to just bring data there and, and, and uh, once it's landed in, in cloud object storage, Chaos Search is allowed to index it uh, on the fly. Now, one of the key elements here, because of the, the ability to index it right in cloud object storage and the core indexing technology at Chaos Search is really a, a, a greatly um, improved and efficient rep full representation of the data you may index a terabyte of data and the index itself may, re may reduce down to as little as 100 gigabytes or less. And it's a full representation of the data. So um, you can glacier off or delete or, or, or not worry about the source data any longer and then do analytics on that data. So with longer term retention, security use cases, other types of trending and analysis, you'll, you're able to do those with, with, this, with this type of approach. Now, certainly there are other, and back to the first slide, there are other ways to kind of create and embrace a data lake philosophy. Um, Chaos Search just enables one at scale that um, I think brings unique, um, um, uh, unique architecture and relative to how it does the indexing right in the cloud object storage of the customer or the end user's account doesn't bring any data and store it in the SaaS environment that Chaos Search exposes. It's really a stateless compute fabric. So all of the administrative overhead of worrying about how you scale your indexing and query infrastructure is kind of collapsed for you and taken care of by our stateless compute, compute fabric. And you retain the ability to control access to the indexes in your cloud object storage as well as the source. Now, just a quick before and after. Now, Chaos Search is essentially a data platform, but our initial go-to-market was around the log and analytics use case that people see with traditionally with our ELK stacks. So just kind of building out here quickly to show the before and after, you know, ELK is, and Elasticsearch and Lucene are wonderful technologies that have, um, you know, solved millions of use cases, but for those of you that have administered and deployed those clusters, as they scale, they get more and more fragile and, and costly. So with Chaos Search, you know, just in this before and after, you can see that now you're able to basically provide the same Kibana experience to your end users right out of, right out of the, the cloud object storage. Now, looking at um, some of the things that you would see with operational BI analytics and ad hoc querying, um, you know, you, you essentially um, want to be able to bring data into your lake and correlate and do ad hoc reporting. 
Um, now, essentially, you're, you're doing that in a number of different tools. With, with a tool like Chaos Search, you're able to bring that all together and do it in one unified location and with one set of, with one tool set, um, in, whether it's Elasticsearch, we're, we're, we're moving to a SQL um, capability as well where you'll be able to come in with tools like Looker and Tableau as well. Now, the other piece of complexity that gets greatly reduced is your, your before and after on, on the data pipelining. So back to that initial concept of bringing data to cloud object storage. Many of you are already doing that, and it's generally a place where you're using it for either a starting point of a movement and journey for data, or it's for archival or for you know, DR purposes. In, the, in our world, we will basically um, index and provide out uh, a Presto capability on that index directly in the bucket in indexing and remove a lot of the complexity that you typically have with other products where you're doing things with Kinesis and Lambda and, and Glue and other things to kind of massage and get the data in a state that it's ready for another system. So Chaos Search is gonna be able to, to handle that for you without having to do a lot of that. And one thing, you know, back to the survey that we mentioned from Unisphere at, at the beginning, um, you know, everyone wants to store more data. They, you know, all these trends are not new. Um, storing more data, being able to uh, refine it and get information and access and solve uh, problems with that data as quickly as possible is what differentiates us. And time to glass is really important. So um, essentially in the chaos search environment, your, your data is coming into the bucket and instantly getting access, uh, indexed so you're able to get to it quickly. So in the survey you'll see that, um, I forget what the number was, but I think it would approach 90% of people were concerned about data latency and the time to glass, time to value. So with a product like this, you're able to, to get to answers quickly without having to move data around in real time or near real time. And with that complexity reduction, clearly there's gonna be cost improvement with that. And be, you know, A, you're maybe eliminating products or processes and costs. Uh, certainly, I don't know if folks are, are uh, followers of Corey Quinn, often network, you know, network um, egress costs and movement of data around a cloud is, comes with cost. So getting it to the bucket, being able to index it and query it right in locale or in situ is an extremely powerful concept. So it's gonna bring with that um, you know, a, a, a cost benefit that may unlock, you know, for budgets that remain static, it may unlock new opportunities to build and do new things with data. Now, just to, just want to quote, um, certainly we all were affected dramatically in IT and in data with the pandemic. Um, the shift to, uh, you know, online learning and e-commerce just drove an explosion of, of, uh, of, of use cases and needs in IT. I, I think uh, um, Satya Nadella said that we experienced in the first three months of the pandemic, like five years of digital transformation in three months. So uh, one of our, our customers, Blackboard, now part of Anthology, they you know, had a hum huge uptick in, in the online um, shift to learning because they're a learning platform, but they had free offerings that went from you know, uh, dozens of thousands of end users to hundreds of thousands, if not more, in overnight. So um, you know, we were able to come in and help them deal with unexpected uh, spikes in load because of our technology being able to essentially store uh, this highly efficient index um, that takes advantage of the distributed nature of cloud object storage. The index itself is you know, a patent, patented technology that allows us to perform at scale, you know, petabyte scale um, in the cloud and provide you know, very easy for us to kind of meet any, any demand. And just kind of reviewing again, you know, the types of things that Blackboard was encumbered with before they, they chose a, a product like Chaos Search to handle uh, data lake thinking. And, you know, the administration of, of and maintaining of environments, you know, requires human, human effort. And um, it's, it's better for us as um, technology professionals to stick on, stick to our knitting relative to, um, 
the, you know, the things that our, our companies wants to, to focus on. So in Blackboard's case, they wanted to focus on providing a great educational experience online. And again, they're a global company, so you know, while centralizing in a data lake, the cloud certainly has to have um, um, itself segmented in ways and, and providing the ability to keep data in certain countries or regions. Uh, you do need to be able to do that with data lake thinking. So Chaos Search was able to bring the ability to index and query and, and provide search and analytics in the different regions for, um, for Blackboard in a way that would you know, adhere to GDPR and other types of local law. And you know, just the complexity of back to the clustering, you know, un unlearning is really, you know, the initial title um, was mentioned about unlearning. You know, we, we definitely appreciate the, the value that came from, you know, cluster databases and cluster technologies like, like Elasticsearch. But um, with that, you know, you scale with clusters and shards and it gets very complex. So in, in Blackboard's case, they were able to essentially use Okta as a unified authentication layer and, um, and then um, they were able to, you know, just collapse that and save a, a very significant amount of, F, of um, money um, and ability to kind of focus on their knitting. Certainly, we have many other customers around the globe in a variety of industries. Some are, you know, larger entities like Equifax, and some are digital natives um, that were born in the cloud. And with that, thank, thanks very much. We'll, we'll hear from Tom, and I appreciate your, your, your time. morning. Let me ask a general question first. How many of you have moved your warehouse or your analytical environment to the cloud? How many are in the process of doing it? How many are thinking about doing it? All right. So what we're going to talk about really is some of the value of getting, you know, really, ah. let, me, let me start this over the value of really moving it to the cloud, you know, and what some of the challenges are and what people are getting out of that. I'm gonna skip over my bio, but a little bit, just a little bit about Datavale, who I work for. We're really focused on helping customers leverage data to drive business results. All right, we're a Microsoft partner, we're an AWS partner, we're an Oracle partner. So we work with all those cloud infrastructures and environments to really migrate data whether it's from a database perspective, an analytical perspective, or an application perspective. We've been around for about 13 years. We're based in Broomfield, Colorado. We've got over 1,000 uh, technical resources that are based in the US, Canada, Sri Lanka, India, and now in Bogota, Colombia. So we truly have an onshore, offshore model and can play the follow the sun as well. We also very much invest in IP capabilities, what we call tech boost and service boost around monitoring, around the implementation, the service, um, help desk support, things of that nature that we've invested probably over $20 million of IP, you know, to help our clients so that we're not coming to the focus green, we're coming with knowledge, with repeatable, with templates. When we talked about the cloud, simply migrating to the cloud with a lift and shift approach does not result in innovation, but it does add another level of complexity to operations. That's a quote from Gartner. And what they're really referring to is, people try to take and say, I'm gonna take my warehouse or my lake, I'm gonna migrate it to the cloud and put it in there. It doesn't always work that way. You have different technologies, different things that you need to think about, and really from an, an innovation perspective, why are people going to the cloud? People are going to the cloud for flexibility to have innovation, to be able to do more with the data. 
When we look at what, what organizations want from analytics, self-service. I was in a presentation yesterday where we talked about that you know, with an insurance company. Everybody is trying to move to some element of self-service capability for the business users. Obviously, it has to be governed, it has to be controlled, but really looking at it from an advanced side of analytics. Integration of data, single source of the truth. That, whether you're on-prem or whether you're in the cloud, that's the same factor. You've got to get to that. You know, and then you've got to be able to govern it. You want to be able to get the right data to the right individual at the right time to be able to address those business questions. If you can't do that, you're not going to be successful. The data has to be structured appropriately, and it's all from a foundational perspective. You need to make sure your foundation is solid before you move it to the cloud. If you don't have the right models, the right capability, you're not going to answer the right questions, which is really what analytics is all about. You know, when we look at people from, from an analytical perspective, most organizations today are down at the bottom of the maturity curve, running the business, generating reports. Some companies generate thousands and thousands of reports, and the issue there is, what are you using those reports for? That's not moving to self-service. That's not getting innovation and value out of the data. You want to try to get up to really getting to innovation and productivity. And here's where we're talking about AI, machine learning, and there's been separate tracks about that. But really getting that market agility and differentiation, but be able to service your clients appropriate, and the cloud is going to help you get there. But again, you have to have that foundation. So what is really cloud analytics? Analytics is the process of gathering, cleansing, transforming, and modeling data with the goal of discovering useful information to support decision making. How many organizations, how many of you are actually looking to get your organization more to a data-driven decision making? I mean, that's nirvana. That's what everybody's trying to get to. How do I leverage data? How do I be um, predictive? How do I be um, prescriptive to understand where I'm going and that I can leverage that data? So really, the goal is to make it accessible, useful, and actionable. What cloud does, cloud analytics does, it utilizes the modern cloud technologies. And the reality is everybody is moving to the cloud. People are getting rid of data centers. You know, most organizations are trying to look at that infrastructure and say, I don't need to provide that anymore. I can move to the cloud, I can pay somebody else to be able to service my environment, I have flexibility, scalability, and agility with that implementation. So why not move it to the cloud? Well, what does it do? All right, cloud analytics provides much more of a foundation for innovation. You can do brainstorming. You know, you can talk about incubating ideas, being able to do design thinking, you know, constant refinement of those ideas. You know, when you talk about machine learning AI, what is the real process? Build a hypothesis, go against the data with the hypothesis, and continue to learn, continue to refine that so that you get the right results. And those results can turn around and give you market differentiation. Or if it's in the area of doing, you know, cross-sell, upsell clients, it gives you new opportunities to be able to move that forward. So what we look at is really looking at what's the difference between cloud and on-prem. All right? And this is really around innovation. For those that have understand innovation, you're really getting to the point of, I have an idea. So I'm in an ideation step. I design from that ideation, I, from building that in the sandbox. People have heard the term minimum valuable product, MVP. That's really where you're innovating towards. So you're designing it, you're refining it, you're incubating that idea, and then you're automating it, and you're pushing that out to the market. Well, if you're on-prem, you know, it's all desktop or web browsing where you're doing the innovation. You're prototyping it, you're discussing it, and you continue to get to a repetitive side of the equation, but in the cloud, You've got emerging capabilities. You can bring prototypes out there. You can push it out to the cloud. You have a much more dynamic user base that you can work with. You've got metadata-powered collaboration, and you can really focus on high-quality analytics within the cloud. Based on a study that we did, all right, or based on IDC, companies are investing in the cloud. You know, everyone here is either looking at it, investing in it, or thinking about it. You know, so the cloud is here to stay. It's not going to change. We did a study of really looking at organizations 
and where they're going in the cloud side of the equation. Most organizations are going to a hybrid approach right now. Combination of on, prem, and in the cloud. Whereas the set in is really some, most, the next step in that was they're in the evaluation or planning stages. And I think that's representative of what you people were looking at. For those that said, hey, we're looking at going to the cloud. You know, everybody, there's only 10% of, of the sources that we went through that were in the cloud. 7% haven't started, but everybody is planning to move analytics to the cloud in the near future. It's here to stay. It's being adopted. There's been a lot of chats and a lot of conversation here at this conference about the cloud. You know, it's a matter of moving what you're trying to get to into the cloud, but what are the benefits you're trying to achieve? Scalability number one, performance. The ability of getting to faster deployment. Faster insights into the data, faster pace of innovation, cost efficiencies and enhanced security. Strangely, the cost efficiencies and enhanced security are down at the bottom of the list. It's really about performance and innovation and getting things out there faster. That's what everybody is trying to do in the cloud today. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Dave. So if anyone has any questions for either Dave or Tom, ask away. And if not, thank you for your time. Yep. <laughs> Actually, Dave, I do have a, I mean, not Dave, sorry, Tom, I have a, a question for you. In terms of um, the, um, uh, uh, the the bar chart that you had mm -hmm. um, in, with the emphasis of um, how uh, folks are either in the cloud, moving to the cloud, thinking about it, and don't plan, and of course, 0% Zero, percent for zero not planning. So it, does the in, um, the type of industry actually impact those numbers? Is there no. one particular industry? Oh, no. No, it really doesn't. We went around it. I mean, we service both insurance, financial services, retail, CPG, really across the board. Everybody is looking at the cloud. There is not, I mean, we actually tried to slice the data from an industry perspective. Right. Yeah, and there yeah. was really no difference. Okay. What about life sciences, pharma? heavily into the cloud right now. Yep. But again, not all life sciences companies are there yet. Right. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> it's a matter of, you know, when you look at some of the, some of the people that are moving to the cloud, what is one of their major concerns? Data security. Right. So, you know, you've got to look, you know, financial services is the same way. That's why a lot of, when you look at most of them that are hybrid, mm -hmm. because some of them are worried about core data and they don't want to push that out to the cloud yet. Yeah. Even though there is a lot of security capabilities there for the cloud. Yeah but people are worried about data security. Right, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Any questions? Okay. And you have 15 minutes to get coffee, Thank you. juice, water. You're welcome, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Dave. So, for the, uh, the next session.